Okay, so we're going to be doing some money calculations today. So hit pause. Let's get our lesson objective keywords down. When you're ready, hit play and we'll move on to the starter. Okay, so what I want you to do is to hit pause, work through these three questions. Once you've done that, hit play again and we'll go through them together. Right then, let's have a go at these questions. First one here is uh, round these to the nearest pound. So remember our approximate symbol, looks like that. So 34.71, that's between 34 and 35. So we would put our line here and check if the seven affected the four, it does. So that's gonna be approximately 35 pounds, okay? If you had to do that, Hit pause and have a go at the rest if you needed that example. Here again, it's the nearest pound, so we put our line here. Does the eight affect the seven? Yes, so that's going to be approximately eight pounds. So we put our line here. Does the two affect the one? No, it doesn't, because it's less than less than five. So that's approximately eleven pounds. Don't forget our approximate symbol. Put our line there. Does a nine affect the four? Yes, it's more than five, so that's going to be 55 pounds. Hope you remember this from the last exercise. 21.50, that's going to be between 21 and 22. It's five or above. It is five, so that's going to take it up to 22 pounds. Question two, write these amounts in pounds, 63 pence. So it's 0.63 pounds. 57p be 0.57. 8p, so we've got to be careful with this, is 0.08. Okay. 2p, again, 0.02. 10p be 0.102. pence, 1 pound 52. Whoops. One pound fifty-two. Three hundred and twenty-seven pence. It's gonna be three pounds and twenty-seven P. Question three, work out the change from ten pounds to each amount. Now this is a, a nice little way of doing it. You work out how many pence it takes to the next pound, and then you can count to your pounds on. So eight pounds twenty-five. Um, to get to nine pounds you need seventy-five P. And from nine pounds to ten is one pound, so one pound seventy-five. Five pounds fifty, so fifty p to get to six pounds is fifty p. And when you're at six, to get from six to ten, you get you need four pounds fifty. And similarly with this, to get to five pounds is one p. And so you're at five to get from five to ten is five pounds and one p. Okay. And same with the rest, so you should have seven pounds 25p. Um, in addition, you could, you could use the uh, column method, just to give you another one. 10 take away three pounds 95. So 10 pounds take away three pounds 95. And to borrow, we have to go all the way to 10 borrow from there that goes down to zero so you've got a 10 here borrow from 10 goes down to nine this goes to 10 borrow again and so we can do 10 take away five which is five nine take away nine which is zero decimal point nine take away three so six pounds and five p okay so you can use that either method and for 7 99 you should have two pounds and one penny. Okay, so what I want you to do now is to rag your work, mark it. Hopefully you've got a green pen. Rag it, oops, one, two, three. Okay, once you've done that, hit play again and we'll have a look at an example.
Right then, let's have a look at this example. Charles has been selling books online. He sells books for £1.50 each. He has made £54. How many books has he sold? Well, there are two ways of doing this. What we can do in the first instance is we want to divide. So we want to divide 54 by £1.50. And we're allowed to use a calculator for this. So what we need to do is we need to divide 54 pounds by 1 pound 50 to give us the number of books. So if we do that, if we have um, 54 and we divide it by 1 pound 50. Now, as we said, we can set this out as a fraction. Okay, it means the same thing, 54 divided by 1 pound 50 or 1.5. Okay. Now, I don't like dividing by a decimal. I'm going to take away that extra zero. We only need it as 1.5. There we go. And back to red. So, it's divided by 1.5. Now, I only need... I, dividing by decimals is quite hard. So, what I'm going to do is make the denominator, the bottom number, um, a whole number. And I can do that by multiplying it by 10. But if I do that to the denominator, I've got to do the same thing to the numerator. Multiply top and bottom by 10. So that gives me 540 divided by 15. Okay. Now, I'm going to do that without a calculator. Traditional method. Bus stop. So we've got 540 divided by 15. Now, how well do you know your 15 times table? I'm not so good on 15, so I'm going to use our method and write the 15 times table down here. Keep adding 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90. I'm going to stop there. I think that'll do. So, can 15 go into 5? Nope. 0, carry the 5. Into 54, be 1, 2, 3 times, because 60 has gone past it. So, 3 times. And 54, take away 45, is 9. 15 into 90, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Six times. So, he has sold 36 books. Oops. Okay. Now, because we're allowed to use a calculator, you could simply have just popped 54 and divided by 1.5 in your calculator and that should have given you 36. You can check that now, try that for me. What I want you to do now is to hit pause, copy this example down. Once you've done that, hit play again and we'll, uh, we'll look at another example. Okay. Here we've got Suzanne, she's got 245p coins, so she works out 240 times 5 is 1,200, and then Ben works out 240 times 0.05 is equal to 12. Which answer is in pounds and which is in pence? Well, Su Suzanne's answer... is in pence so that's 1200 pence which is equal to if we divide by 100 12 pounds and Ben's answer is in pounds and he got 12 pounds so they've got the same amount okay which method is better well, that depends on you. For well, the calculation, um, Su Susan's answer is, is much easier because you do 240 times 5. So it's, it's easier. But 
when she's worked it out, she has to convert it back into pounds. Okay, so but let's put that in. But she needs to convert it. Her answer into pounds. Now Ben's answer is 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 it's a more difficult calculation, but it gives the answer in pounds. So for the answer, this calculation there. Ben's answer is already in pounds. Okay, good. So again, copy the example down. Once you've done that, I've got some, some questions for you to attempt. Okay, so questions for you. Start from question six. We've already done question five. And work your way through. Then you turn the page and you work up to question 18, the reflection question. Now, what I want you to remember is for each question, you can use a calculator, but you have to state in your solution what you are, what you are calculating, okay? Don't just give me the answer. What are you calculating? Are you dividing? Are you multiplying? Let me know. Okay, good. Good luck. I'll put the, um, pop the question sheet in the, uh, in the assignment.